Shiva can come over. And we're like, Mirage, it's yet, and Han said that that's how it's just struggle with this Shiva, it's for kids that, so, you know, kids that need physic, he says, Lama again, let's go. So the driver of our car, it's not me, said, I don't know where Yeshiva is, it's before the days of wait. So he said to one of the Bachar, this was Yeshiva, follow him. Meanwhile, we're following him, and he's going in a parking lot, around the parking lot, around the corner, back around the corner. And it became very obvious what he was doing. He was stalling for time so that the Rosh Hashiva can get back to the Yeshiva and get everyone out of their pajamas and into this bed. So the driver was getting very angry. He says, well, what is he doing, he said. He says, well, we're going around in circles. He says, around the corner, around the corner. Remember, a palm said, yeah, 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 yeah. So he's, where are you going? Where's the Yeshiva? He goes, you know, next, around the corner. He says, which corner? He says, right. <laughs> Remember, a palm said, yeah, Herbert Hoover said that, uh, Prosperity is around the corner, but didn't say which corner. So finally, this driver yells out at the top of his lungs. He says, uh, why are we here? Why are we, why are we driving around this parking lot for 20 minutes? We couldn't figure out what the, the guy doing. He doesn't know the way. So finally, someone said, ah, the Balshemtiv said, you know, sometimes you have to be in a certain place. So the guy says, well, we, we don't make any brachas over here or anything. Like, well, why are we in a certain place? If anything, it was the opposite of brachas that was emanating from something like that. Not much. So finally, some of the I know what the guy's doing. He's stalling for time. He's stalling for time so that by the time we get there, it's going to, everyone's going to be sitting in the list measures, you know, shaking back and forth about the Gemara. Forget it. He's making a fool out of us. Let's go. He said, so this is part of the chesed. Part of the chesed is that that guy needs that we should stall for time so we get there. So I understand. You do a chesed. So it's sometimes going around the parking lot 20 times is the chesed. Do you understand? And then he said, Mori de Gazach, he says, the Bashem says, you have to be in a certain place, right? Sometimes you have to be in a certain place to make a bracha to be massacring the frog over there. That's there. And sometimes you have to be in a certain place and you don't want to be there. And this that you're macabre that I'm here for a purpose, whoever's gaining by this, let it be, let, let me be a vehicle of chesed for someone else. That's the same ticket as the bracha. That, that's where we're supposed to be. We live in a world, the judges, you know, they, they want to see the bottom line. And that's why really Eretz Yisrael is, is Eretz Yisrael. So Hashem alekecha darish I said Talmud. What does that mean? It's Hashem alekecha darish I said Talmud. It's just darish the entire world. Because particularly in Eretz Yisrael, the emphasis is that we're going to find out. The Rebbe Shalom says, that, I want to see, I want to see your Messias Nefesh. And often the Messias Nefesh doesn't lead to things that we see bear fruit. And the Kaddish Baruch Hu says, irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It's as Eshel. It's Hashem Lekecha Doi Rish The first day of teaching, first day that I started teaching, eighth grade, some odd 35, 36, 37 years ago. <laughs> Time keeps me running. It's 37 years ago. And I went to this course, and uh, which the school obligated me to go. And basically, in the course, the, the, one of the people said, you know, you got to come into this class, you got to take control of the classroom. If you don't to take control of the classroom right away, and maybe I misinterpreted what it said. But basically, his idea was, don't laugh at the Hanukkah, don't talk to the kids in Purim, just make sure, just look tough, you know, skid a little daylights out of them, and then uh, if not, they'll, they'll step along. So I said, okay, yeah, that's the way you do it, that's the way you do it. And I walked in. He said, I'm home, so you walk in like this, you know, you have to position yourself and steer them down. So I walked in, I stood there, I steered them down, and they're coming in, they're going, the kids are going, so I left. So kids are getting in, they take their positions, and I'm like, even though I have no idea who should sit next to who, but just, <laughs> just to show control. I'm very satisfied with the way things are going. And I sit down on my chair, and in order to create an aura of power, control, so I, I, you know, I, I, I lean back with the back two legs of the chair, you know, the front two legs up in the air, so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm cool, casual. And as I started to give them this speech, how this class was going to be law and order, 
Ma'asa HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Must have been a Ma'amuch that came along and lifted the front two legs. And I went, whoop! <laughs> Imagine these kids they're looking at this general of a Rebbe, like, I don't know, what kind of year are we going to have? And all of a sudden, all they see is the soles of his shoes. You know they said that a Rebbe is supposed to give it his, his soul. You've got to teach with your soul. <laughs> so all they see is the sole of the shoes. And I knew the hole inside, too, because everybody goes through the socks. And like, I don't know what hit me. Like, boom, all of a sudden, you're on your back. And the kids burst into laughter. Which really is very, pretty funny. Thing. And of course, they all jumped out of their seats to help me up. And I remember screaming like a maniac, which is the last thing in the world I should have done. Get into your seats! I'll me, you're laughing! And, like, yeah. and they sit down. And, and I woke up. I was absolutely certain that my career is over. I, I was certain that my, my teaching career was over. I was certain that that's it. There's nothing I can do with And I went up to the principal and said, I quit. So ready? And finished the first day. And I told the principal, they're a bunch of them. So often, really? Usually, usually the first day, you know, it's up. It's at least till the second. Day. Always say the kids are like, you know, always tell the baby now. The kids are like green as right. You know, they still kind of, they turn yellow, then you start seeing the spots. So, I, so I, tell, I tell them now what happened. And they all burst into laughter. Because what is the now that burst into laughter? I said, you're also one of us. What are you? Like, you know, I didn't say that. He said, what do you want to do? That's very funny. That's very funny when a rabbit sits down on day number one and boom, boom, he sees the soles of the shoes. So I said, well, be it as it may be, whether they had a right to laugh or not, I, 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 I can't teach it because I lost this class. They know what? I get it. I'm going to do computer programming, which I was never good at. I tried. I flunked all those, app, those aptitude tests. And uh, it doesn't work when you start writing stories. They want you to fill out a bunch of circles and squares. And I said, I'm not going back. And so, so this Manal, very, very clever Manal, he puts his hands on my shoulder and he says, don't know how to divide the letter of love. I said, okay. Comes with the type of He says, I saw the way you're going to the class. He said, it wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to work. You were coming in as a mad general, as a dictator. It wasn't going to work. I said, if, if you don't, is it important to have discipline in the classroom? There's control and there's discipline. It's important to have discipline. Discipline means you set up a set of rules, and the kids have to know to abide by the rules, and there are consequences for them. You want you you want them to control. You are demanded they respect you. That's control. It's not going to work. Some people for something maybe it can work, not for you. You'll never do it. Those don't matter. You just don't have it. That's what you say. And you go you go it would have been a disaster. This is what now it's a pretty big disaster also. I said, I'm going to walk in the next day, they're all going to start laughing as soon as I walk in. So I said, okay, you know what you should do? What? He says, laugh along with them. He says, just laugh about what happened yesterday. I go ahead. He said, you're not going to have that presence or control. And I can, to this day, I meet this guy, you know, that's in my class uh, 38 years ago. Just think about this. I can't believe these numbers. You know, you see this guy with a pot belly and bubble chin. Remember I was in your eighth grade class? You didn't look that way then, yeah? Yes. So he tells me, and I say it's a lot. He says, you remember my name? Look at all this. If I remember your name, that's not such a good sign. And he would say, so tell me, which year were you in my class? And I was in hell. I was the year that you flipped. OK, I know, I know. <laughs> He'll just stop laughing like Silver. You know, he's just redoing the whole thing. So basically, I discussed it with my peers. I had two choices. One was to quit. And the other was to say, listen, this is where I am. I gotta pick up the pieces. Where I am. And I came in the next day holding a rug, a little rug. And I put it down. I said, this is in case I fall. <laughs> so what I did was I, I, I superseded the kids. In other words, I, and, and we joked about it. I laughed along with them, which is not the thing you're supposed to do. I'm not gonna tell you it was a perfect year, but it was a good year. It was a good year. And the reason it was a good year is because I, I, I gave up the idea of trying to control it, trying to make sure things are going to work out. Kids crave discipline. They hate control. And the Rabbi Nishalayim does the same thing for us. And that's the area that Hashem Lekach Adoyvish Oisin Tami. The Rabbi Nishalayim says, I'm not looking at success, and I'm not looking at failure. I don't want you to control things. I don't need you to do chesed for the chesed to work. 
I need you to do chesed to the best of your ability. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm looking at. We don't know. And we don't know what our pa'ula does in Shemayim. The person goes uh, in the shidduch process. Also a very difficult time, whether it's the person himself or it's with his children. So he said, Kasha zivuga shaladam kakriya siyamsa. So the square Rebbe Shalom Bracha said, what does it mean, Kasha zivuga shaladam kakriya siyamsa? Why kakriya siyamsa? Because Taisa says in Sechta Saita, when the Yidin went into the Yamsa, they didn't go, unlike the typical coloring book, they didn't go in one side and come out the other side. It was like a semicircle. They came in one side, they came around, they came back out on the same side that they went in, and the Mitzrayim chased them in and we're trying to cut around. That's what Tyson says. So he says, Shidduchim is also the way. You start out with Shidduchim, you have these great ideas, and you have your imagination, you have this long list of what you want, the husband, what you want, the wife, and as time goes on, and then you start reading the Shidduchim, and they go, no, not for me, not for me. They're nice people, they're not talented. You know, and then as time goes on, you will say, what was that? that was so it's like this, now. So you come back to the people. You know how many times people come home to have this all the time? Let's take a shower of stuff. Uh, I need like a, it's about tired. What do you want to say? I don't know. So you don't want to talk. You want speech. <laughs> so at 